Hey everybody, I wanted to do a uh, quick review on a couple different real lawnmowers. Um, on my right, you have the Fiskars Momentum 18 inch. On my left, you have the Scott's Classic 20 inch. Um, main reason I wanted to do a review on these two is I really couldn't find much information online comparing them side by side. So I figured this would be beneficial for everyone involved. So here we go, we'll kick it off. Uh, a little bit of background. Um, the Scott's 20 inch classic came from eBay, um, an eBay store online. So it did come with the grass catcher, um, new in the box, set up perfectly. Um, just really, really good mower at a really good price. Um, on my right here, the Fiskars, um, this unit is used. So keep that in mind. It is a used unit that I did purchase off of Craigslist here locally where I am located at. Um, I did pay $30 for this unit and it did come with the um, grass catcher that you see up front. The previous owner didn't use the grass catcher. Matter of fact, it was still in um, it was still in the box here, so which is a pretty good deal. So it's upside down, but you get the gist of it. So um, main thing I just wanted to go over, just compare the two units side by side. Um, just um, inform you all and just uh, let you know what I thought about them. So um, some more background. Um, previously before these two units, um, to introduce myself into real lawn mowing, I did purchase another 16 inch Scott's real mower. It's not pictured here, but I did kind of want to go over that briefly with you all. Um, I did have that unit for probably a couple months. I bought that used off of Craigslist as well. I basically got it at a steal of a deal, $10. Um, previous owner, you know, I don't think he really knew how to use the machine. Um, and that's what I'm kind of figuring out about these things is, um, you got to adjust them properly and to, you know, they're not really a full replacement for, um, an actual gas powered lawnmower for some people. Um, a lot of people don't like doing yard work. So what that means or what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people, um, will mow the yards once a month or whatever the case may be. They don't stay on top of it. They let their grass grow um, astronomically tall, and then they try to tackle it, tackle it with one of these real lawnmowers. And let's be honest, that's not what these things are made for. Yeah, they'll probably cut it or the Fiskars or maybe they'll cut it. But, you know, this is for someone who um, is well manicuring their yard, um, is staying on top of it, likes to mow just likes that upkeep. Yes, it's a lot of hard work. They're hard to push. Um, but, you know, you don't really realize how much noise that gas lawnmower makes until you use one of these things. And um, I got to tell you, I love it. So anyways, I have a 16 inch. I had that for a few months and um, bought it, used. It was not set up properly at all. Um, the blades were too far I'm sorry, the reel was too far away from the bed knife, so it wouldn't cut. And on top of that, the blades were dull. So me being new to it, brought it home. You know, I I couldn't figure the thing out at first, but um, I start tearing into it. And what had happened is I adjusted the reel to the bed knife, got that set up properly, still wouldn't cut. So I ended up back lapping that reel mower myself. When I say back lapping, Basically what I did is I bought some valve, um, I think it's valve grinding or valve, valve grinding compound. You can get it at your local automotive stores. I bought it off of Napa. Um, it's a big tube of it, but um, basically you smear that on the blades and you run that reel backwards either um, manually. You can switch the gears. For those of you that already know this, uh, for those of you that don't, I'll probably make a video later on showing how to do that. But um, you can you can run it with the drill backwards, or you can switch the gears, um, this gear on this wheel, this gear on that wheel, and you can run it, and essentially that'll run that reel backwards. Uh, you do that until you get it nice and sharp. And I did that on that 16 inch, and let me tell you, for $10, that thing was awesome. It worked flawlessly. It was light, it was nimble, it was great. However, when I got to the thicker stuff, thicker grass, thicker patches, that's where it struggled. It's a lighter unit. It could get in those nooks and crannies great, but the thicker stuff, it just, 
it wouldn't fully jam, but it would just get caught up. And you'd really have to just wrestle that thing to get it to chew through that thick stuff. So I was reading online and I read good things about the 20 inch right here that said that one of its advantages is it's a heavier unit and the cuts better and it plows through that thicker stuff. And they're absolutely 100% correct. It plows through the thick stuff like none other. Um, it's great. This 20 inch is awesome. The 16 inch, you know, I kind of miss it just because it was light, it was nimble. But, um, you know, I think it went to a good individual. He was also trying to figure out if he wanted to get into the real lawn mowing thing. So I sold it to that individual, made a little bit of money off of it, and um, I think it, it made him happy. So um, that's the story on the 16 inch. So moving to the 20 inch, Scott's Classic. Um, eBay got a good deal, new in the box, out of the box, set up perfectly, didn't have to adjust it. I did the paper test on it. The, the blades were cutting, they were adjusted to the bed knife perfectly. Um, the bagger works good. Um, overall, the Scott's Classic is a flawless unit. Um, you know, it's the older real technology compared to the Fiskars. When I say older, um, it's just, it's not lacking in any terms. It's just simple and it works. And that old school technology is flawless, but the Fiskars one of the advantages of the Fiskars is that it has the momentum, hence the name Fiskars Momentum. So it's got a chain and a gear drive mechanism on the side of it right there. And essentially what that does is it doesn't require as much effort pushing it. You can definitely tell pushing the Fiskars versus pushing the Scott's Classic in the grass, thicker stuff, it does not take much to push this Fiskars and get those blades going. It does for the Scott's Classic. Let me see if I can show you here. So obviously there's not grass, but when you push it, okay, that's all you, that's all manpower, woman power. When you push this Fiskars, I mean, those blades get to go and you can't see them right now, but um, I'll probably take the bag off this Fiskars real quick just to show you the blades and everything. But I just wanted to show you the setup. So let me go ahead and take this bag off real quick. It's pretty simple. It's just got hooks up on the front, so let's get rid of that bag. All right, so the, there you go. Um, so comparing the two, um, the Scott's Classic is a little bit more um, easy to maneuver. Um, the Fiskars is heavier, and it's just, the way it's set up, the front wheels on it, it's just, it's a little bit harder to maneuver around corners and tight areas, but um, it's not bad. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is, well, comparing the two once again, um, I don't think you can go wrong either way, but here is why I am making this video and here is why, hence, I have two real mowers in my garage right now. I live in a smaller community. Um, our houses are close to, to one another. We have decent sized yards, um, but I just wanted something to where I could mow and I could mow early in the morning or I could mow late at night. Um, and not bother anyone. Not only that, but I wanted something to where uh, my daughter, she's 11 months old now, and she's getting to a point where she can be outside, and she's walking, and she's, she's just loving it. And I thought to myself, man, if I could mow with her, you know, in the vicinity or in the area, I mean, let's just face it, you cannot mow with a rotary-powered, gas-powered mower with your kids in the yard. It's just not safe. Um, using one of these things though, I got to thinking like, well, she could be outside playing on the swing set or on the patio and I don't have to worry about anything and that would be awesome. So that's, that's kind of, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to get one of these things. And, um, now I have two, but, um, I want to show you something real quick. The way the Scott's mower is set up and really any mower, um, like the Scott's, there's a lot of off brand or different brand real lawn mowers that are set up similar to the Scots. There's not, I don't think there's really any that's set up like the Fiskars and the gear mechanism and how it works with that momentum. But what I'm getting at is the Scots, the reel to the bed knife, it contacts, it, it's contacting. In other words, that reel touches that bed knife. Um, the way the Fiskars is set up, it's a non-contacting blade to the, um, 
bed knife set up. So let me just show you. I pushed them earlier, but um, what ends up happening is, so it's so tight on the Scots that you get, and I'm gonna get flack for it, but I don't care. It is what it is. I know these things are quieter than a gas mower. And honestly, no one's gonna hear either one of these inside their house. But let me just show you what I was trying to figure out and I couldn't find online, okay? The Scots Classic, yes, it's quiet. It's not gonna bother anyone, but listen, listen. You hear that? That is that reel and that bed knife. Okay? That's what that is. Okay? Now, I know people, there's some people out there that can adjust it to where it's not touching like that, and it's not making that full-on contact, and it's not as loud. But I, I've tried on this thing, and I've tried on my 16-inch, and in order for me to cut that piece of paper and make that cut test, that reel and that bed knife have to be touching to a slight degree and thus making that noise. Here's the Fiskars. Now I want to keep you in mind that the Fiskars is a used unit and the reason I got it for $30, I believe, is that A, the individual didn't know how to set it up properly. It was not set up properly. The blade was too far away from the real knife. The bed knife, I'm sorry. Wow. So I ended up adjusting it to where it's close enough and it's cutting that piece of paper and it's cutting it great. However, one of the blades on the reel is either bent or it's longer one than the other, but you'll get, you'll hear it. Listen, you hear that? So essentially this Fiskars is quiet. Okay. One more time. The only noise you're hearing right now, keep in mind, is that one blade on that reel that is making contact with that bed knife. All the other ones, you hear that? It's just that one. One more time. One more time. It's just that one. And so, essentially, one more time, the noise level for me, okay? Fiskars is quiet, silent, other than the fact that that one blade. And a little bit of backstory, Fiskars customer service is phenomenal. Um, I'm not going to mention what exactly they're doing, but I will make an updated video. Um, I did contact them, and they're going to help me out. So, so far, A-plus to Fiskars uh, customer service. Um, they're going to get me help. They're going to help me out on the whole um, noise and that that one blade that's giving me issues. Other than that, that mower is silent, guys. And yes, you're not gonna hear the one of these inside the next door neighbor's house. But what I'm getting at is, if you want something dead quiet, the Fiskars is the win. Um, not only that, but um, you know, the adjustability on the Scots, it's, it's easy, you know, you got these two, two knobs on the side and really, it's like your gas-powered mower. I mean, you, you can adjust it there on the fly. Now, there's adjustments on the back of the Scots, and then a lot of people don't understand. These things come from the factory at their highest setting. So essentially, you have a bolt down here, and you've got three positions in your wheel over here that you can raise or lower, okay? So if you want that short um, inch or, or lower cut, I, I think it's an inch, I'm not quite sure, but... Um, you have to um, basically pop off, um, do a little bit of, um, there's, a, there's a little thing here, C-clip, you gotta pop off, take the wheel off, um, and then um, what the wheel sits on here, the axle, the axle unscrews, you got a nut on the inside, and you pull that apart, and you can adjust the wheels. So that essentially is another adjustment that you have to do. But on the Fiskars, um, there's no other adjustment but this handle right here, um, this lever, I mean, it goes, it says it goes from one inch all the way to four inches, and that's it. So I think that's pretty neat about the Fiskars. Um, I mean, the Scots, you can probably set it and forget it. Um, you know, um, 
set it on the middle setting and um, you got that adjustability in the back so I think you're good there but um, man I, I really like the just the the lever on this one what I'm getting at but um, you know longevity um, Fiskars obviously makes good good tools good shears good scissors so I'm, I'm a little concerned about the longevity of the gear mechanism and the chain that's just some you know more wear and tear that you got to deal with but um, with Scott's Classic, I mean, it's old school, proven, reliable technology. So um, I don't think you can go wrong with either unit. I think both of them are great. Um, really, it's just preference. Um, I will say this. The Fiskars is priced significantly more than that Scott's. Do I agree with that price tag? No, I do not. Um, the Scott's way cheaper however you can find the Fiskars online Craigslist eBay um, your Facebook marketplace for under $100 easily and what I found out typically is that people get these things and they're either not set up correctly or they're trying to mow once a month and that's just not gonna cut it guys um, that's not what these things are made for so um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm really digging that Fiskars um, Scott's classic it's it's proven it's reliable it's great too, but I've, I've noticed that the Fiskars is easier to push, but uh, maneuverability wise, the Scott's Classic wins. So, I mean, it, you know, it just boils down to personal preference. Uh, the price factor is huge. It's a big difference in the price factor there, but um, I just want to go over a few last things. So uh, maneuverability, definitely. Um, I think the Scott's Classic is, you know, kind of easy to, easier to maneuver. So kind of the win goes there for me. Um, the weight, um, you know, the Fiskars weighs more. I'm not quite sure on the weight, but, um, you know, it, it doesn't really bother me, the weight on the Fiskars. So it's, it's kind of a tie, kind of a toss-up um, on the weight thing. Ease of use, um, for instance, how hard is it to push? Just, once again, maneuverability. Um, you know, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The momentum on the Fiskars really gets those blades going. And so it, you can definitely tell a difference when you're chopping through grass, thick stuff, that the uh, Fiskars momentum definitely is easier. It takes the icing on the cake. Um, either one of these, <laughs> you're gonna get a workout, so prepare to sweat. Either way, I think it's they're both you know gonna push you pretty dang good. You're gonna push them, in other words. Um, maintenance, sharpening, uh, non-contacting, uh, reel to bed knife. Um, I definitely think the Scots, you're probably going to have to sharpen a little bit more or sooner than the Fiskars, just due to the Fiskars reel not contacting that bed knife. But um, honestly, like I think the Scots, you know, it, man, it's, it'll go for a while before you need to sharpen it, really. I mean, I don't see any reason why, you know, at the end of the season, you may have to sharpen it. You may even be able to go two seasons. But, um, you know, it's kind of like the, the maintenance on the, um, the gas-powered lawnmower blades you know I always sharpen my lawnmower blade each season so just to stay on top of it so I think you're gonna have to sharpen sharpen the Scots probably um, sooner adjustability um, you know it's a toss-up yes you, the only adjustability you have to mess with on the Fiskars is that lever on the side um, but I think that the Scots classic once you set that initial uh, the setting on the wheels and then you just fine-tune it in the back adjustability um, I think it's not a problem at all, so it's just a toss-up. Um, quality, um, that's a tie to me. Scott's, I'm a big Scott's fan. Um, I like their stuff. I also like Fiskars. Fiskars, um, all my garden tools, my shears and stuff. Um, Fiskars stuff, so that's a toss-up too. The quality's good. However, let me, let me touch on this real quick. The handle on the 20-inch scott's classic seems to be the only negative review i have found about it and it does seem a little bit flimsy when you're pushing it really hard um, you just got a lot of wing nuts here that um you know you can hand tighten those so much but um there's still some flex to this handle and i've heard reviews about it cracking right here and tearing off but um, i've also heard good good feedback on um getting a hold of scott's or getting a hold of their warranty department and um you know getting that situated so that's the only negative thing um, quality wise about the Scots it's just the, the handle is a little bit flimsy on my 16 inch the uh, handle was solid though it's just a little bit different build 
but um, 20 inch, I don't have any issues with it. I definitely can tell it flexes when you're pushing it hard, but uh, the Fiskars, no flex at all. That thing is solid and built like a tank. The Fiskars is built like a tank too, it's just a handle. Um, price, I touched on that earlier. That Fiskars, boy, they're proud of their, pro they're, they're proud of their stuff. Um, but once again, you can find this fist you can find the Fiskars online for $100 or less, and then you can also find the Scott's Classic. I mean, those things are going anywhere from 25 bucks to, you know, probably $100 used online. And then if you're going to buy one new in the store, yeah, you're going to chump, you're going to, you know, um, pay a little bit of premium. But, um, you know, if you don't want to have to worry about adjustability and sharpening right off the back, then definitely buying new saves you that time and hassle. Um, so really, both of them, both of them are a win. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep the Fiskars. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to mow with this bad boy. I'll keep you up to date, let you know, um, what Fiskars does. Um, once again, their, their, um, customer service department is great. So hands up on that. But, um, the Scott's Classic is going to a, a good friend of mine. Um, I'm going to, um, sell it to him. He's going to try it out and, um, see how he likes the whole real mowing aspect of it. So, um, let me know what you think. Um, Subscribe, uh, give me some likes, give me some feedback. Let me know what you did like. Let me know what you didn't like. Um, I definitely look forward to doing more of these videos and I definitely look forward to uh, showing you just yard progress because, um, man, I, I love cutting with these things now. And um, it definitely brings people when I'm out cutting. Uh, I've noticed people definitely, you know, stop and ask me, oh, you, what are you using? Or, wow, you're using that old school technology. Why would you do that? And, you know, I give them a little bit of feedback, let them know, and they scratch their head and they walk away. So it's just kind of neat. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys have a, a good day, and um, hopefully I can make more of these videos.